days, no longer Dre Day, no longer Dre Day, or even Dirt J. Check your sexuality, as fruity as the Salazé. Check your sexuality, as fruity as the Salazé. Quick the jump ship, punk trick, what a dumb move. Cross death row, now who you gon' run to? L.A., California Love Park, motherfucker too. Without gay ass Dre, without gay ass Dre. Every day, practically, your father was there, your mother was there. Um, towards the end, you brought your son down. Um, there was one person that I did not see down there, and it was Dr. Dre. And knowing that he was your so-called mentor and the guy that you started off with, um, why wasn't he there? Mm, I don't know, personally. But I mean, I, I used to always go get at him and talk to him and, um, you know, highlight him about the case in general. And he supported me through it, but the point of, of him coming down there you know, I really can't explain why he didn't come, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I guess, I don't know. But I ain't mad at him for that, you know what I'm saying? We back right here with Tupac, you know, just chopping up, chopping up a little bit. Uh, can't let you hear everything, you know? <laughs> Some stuff. Put it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. My man's definitely putting it down. One more thing about Death Row. Now, how does the, um, what's going on with Dre, and how does that affect Death Row as a whole? No, hold on. Dre's doing his own thing. It don't affect us. My uh, take on what happened was that Snoop was on trial for murder, fighting for his life. The, somebody had said that Dre was in the car. The, the jury believed that. We needed Dre to be there to say he wasn't there. And once they would have saw him, they would have known he wasn't there. And that would have saved Snoop's whole case. Because they would have saw that the, the witness that had said it was lying. And Dre never showed up. He was too busy. That's how they told me. When they told me that, I was like, well, no matter how dope he is, and Dre's one of my heroes in the music business, but I was like, no matter how dope he is, if he's not down for his homeboy, Snoop brought him back when he was just a relic, when niggas was dissing him, you know what I mean? Then I don't want to be a part of him. I don't want to be around him or nothing. Plus, I feel as though what's done in the dark will come to life. It's secrets that everybody's going to find out about that I don't have to play a hate or dry snitch about. That will come out, you'll find out for yourself, and you'll know why I did it. I swear to God, y'all, I'm living by the rules of the game that y'all, the people, have put down. Uh, that's real. Let's talk about other things like you told us you got it. You understand? And, and that is, he wasn't producing shit. Other niggas was producing the beat like on my album. Other niggas was doing the beat and Dre was getting the credit. And I got to go on MTV and be like, yeah, he did this, he did that. No, he ain't do it. He is a dope producer, but he ain't worked in years. And I got tired of that. I, I didn't think we needed that. I, I think... We didn't need that. And he was owning the company too, and he's and he's chilling. He owning the company. He's chilling this out, sucking dick, eating pussy. I'm out here in the street. You know what I mean? Whooping niggas ass, starting wars and shit, putting it down, dropping albums, doing my shit. And this nigga taking three years to do one song. Dre is not coming today. Hey, girl, why you acting like Dre won't be today? All the rumors will go on. Stop acting like that. Dre is not coming. In the beginning, but we were so young and, and, and dumb and riding with Dr. Dre and anybody that had a problem with Dr. Dre, we were like, fuck him. Anybody, right. everybody. Right. So I always felt when Pac died, it was because the soup could have stopped that whole thing. I mean, because like I said, soup was a crip and Pac offended some crips doing some gang shit, some dumb nigga gang shit, really. It was a whole, set off a whole chain of events. You know niggas in L.A. don't get mad, they get even. So, you want a real Pac story? That's my uh, Pac story. If Pac would be alive today, if he had to stay allies with Snoop, not cross Snoop. Bringing up Snoop, um, there is a um, spoken of altercation between Snoop and Tupac in New York. Let's, um, let's, let's, you... let's, 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 let's do this. Let's go okay. back before New York. Okay? Okay. Because to, to, to be fair, I'm, I'm only interrupting you to be fair, because that beef between Pac and uh, Snoop happened before New York. Right. This is how it happened. We were scheduled to do the Roseanne Barr show. Snoop and Pac had a dual um, 
single, Two of America's Most Wanted. He had already shot the video and done all of that. The song was uh, off the charts. It was bumping. We were at the penthouse in uh, L.A. off of Wilshire. We were at the very top. Snoop had one wing. Pac had the other wing, meaning one side of that top building was Tupac's penthouse. The other side, when you came off the elevator, if you made a left, you would go to Pox. If you made a right, you would go to uh, Snoop's. Those were the only two penthouses up there. Snoop and Pox supposed to have performed together at the Roseanne Bar Show. And Snoop was over at Pox's penthouse, and Pox and he were talking. He uh, said, so you know what time you got to be there, and uh, you, you're going to be there, and this and that, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Snoop was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Snoop never showed up. So we had already gone to the rehearsal. Snoop supposed to show up for the rehearsal. He wasn't there. So we go back after rehearsal to the penthouse. But before we, before we um, went back, this is what was funny. Ice-T was at the rehearsal. And I think he uh, was going to be part of hosting the show or doing something with them. And when we went back to the penthouse, all the way going back, Pac was irate, pissed off. And he was talking about Snoop. So, wow, he didn't come for the rehearsal. He didn't lie, blah, 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 blah. Call your homeboys, Frank. Call your homeboys. The homeboys was Snoop's bodyguard, mm -hmm. Kenneth and Marcus. So I called Kenneth up and I said, Kenny, what's up, man? I go, Pac is like, tripping, dude. Uh, Snoop didn't show up for the rehearsal. Because, yeah, I know. Because we still over in the penthouse. Because uh, he said he wasn't going. And I said, what? But, dude, he didn't show up for the rehearsal, man. What Pac going to do? They supposed to perform. Pac did his parts and everything. Because I don't know. He said he ain't going. So I hey Pac. He said, Snoop said he ain't going. And if you remember, if you saw it, they did um, uh, a Karen Carpenter song. And they made a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. So Snoop and Pac didn't perform that night. And from that time on, that time forward, Pac was like, done with Snoop. He like, this nigga turned on me. And if you look at any of the uh, following couple of weeks uh, went by, and when they went to the MTV Awards, if you look at any of the pictures, any of the footage of Pac and Snoop sitting there next to one, uh, one another being interviewed by MTV, Snoop just is holding the mic, looking straight ahead, with, like, no expression on his face at all. Mm -hmm. Pac is just like, whoop, 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 Just interviewing and, like, going off. He never said a word. He sat there like, like, this nigga's little brother, I can't open my mouth. And if you look at it, is everybody now, since he's not around, everybody claims that they was great friends. Everybody to a show. Some artists knew him, but like Pac and Snoop at the end hated each other. And you could tell that by the simple fact that when Snoop did Dogfather, Pac was not on that one song. And Pac didn't like Dre. That would change the death row camp because of the jealousy of Tupac. Because Tupac was now all of a sudden now, he's his major star, he getting all the light, he getting all the attention. So you know, that to me, you know, was childish on their part, but they can never feel the shoes that Pac filled by walking the life that he walked in. Pac became the third piece, but his spirit wasn't the same spirit as me and Dr. Dre's. Me and Dr. Dre had a spirit of music, love, and harmony. Pac had animosity, revenge, retaliation. I'm already to be working. Take just step and turn and shoot the first nigga smirking. Give a fuck. 
all the time, and I always wanted to ask you, what was your beef with Tupac? What, why was he so pissed off with y'all? You know, he had his thug-like shit going, and when we made the Infamous album, we had a song called Survival of the Fittest. And on that song in the beginning, one of my mans that just came home from jail during the 15 years, his name Ferg, has had his cousin actually. Um, Ferg is on that album, and Ferg's in the beginning of the song, he says, oh, thug like we still living it. Thug like we still living it. Still living it. Tupac is, you know, he's the one that was most known for saying that. So I think that pissed Tupac off a little bit. He thought, he took that as disrespect, like, oh, these niggas trying to say thug life, uh, nah, that's our shit, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't really come out and say nothing about it, though, until Snoop and the Door Pound made the song L.A. L.A. He didn't really come out and say nothing about it, though, until Snoop and the Door Pound made the song L.A. L.A. You know what I mean? The, the New York, New York shit, whatever. The city of dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So when they made that, you know, we um, we was looking at it like, what? Like, these niggas is kicking over our buildings in the video, stomping through the city. It's like real disrespectful shit that they, you know, you know, was disrespectful. They knew that was disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? They knew we went back at them niggas, you know what I mean? We made our version, L.A. L.A., and we, we like, oh, fuck these niggas. We holding it down. This is, you can't even be coming through Queens and New York's kicking over buildings and shit, and nobody gonna say nothing about it. L.A., L.A., big city of dreams, but everything in L.A. ain't always what it seems. This is when Tupac first signed her to, to death row. So, I guess when he seen that, he figured, all right, now, now I'm going at these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Hard body. So he went at us, you know what I mean? And that's what that was about. Mm. Well, I had seen him before that because we had actually, we left New York. Mm -hmm. We had just left New York. I had got off the radio station with Angie Martinez and that's when me and him like clashed because she asked me on the air, how do you feel about Puffy and Biggie? Mm -hmm. And I said what I felt. They're my homeboys, I love them. I'm down for you, so ride with me. My enemies, your enemies. Cause you ain't never had a friend like me.